Welcome students, I am Dr. Rashmi Tyagi from the Department of Sociology and I am going to deliver a lecture under the e-learning program of the university on theoretical concepts in sociology, research and theory. What is theory? In the words of Abraham Kaplan, a theory is a way of making sense of a disturbing situation so as to allow us most effectively to bring to bear our repertoire of habits and even more important to modify habits or discard them altogether, replacing them by the new ones as the situation demands. In the reconstructed logic, accordingly, theory will appear as the device for interpreting, criticizing and unifying established laws, modifying them to fit the data, unanticipated in their formulation and guiding the enterprise of discovering new and more powerful generalizations. To engage in theorizing means not to just learn by experience, but to take thought about what is there to be learned. Some definitions now by Blablock. It has been noticed that theories do not consist entirely of conceptual schemes or typologies, but must contain law-like propositions that interrelate the concept of variables two or more at a time. By Gibbs, a theory is a set of logically interrelated statements in the form of empirical assertions about properties of infinite classes of events or things. By Hage, there is a general agreement that a theory is a set of propositions or theoretical statements. By Stinkholm, theory ought to create the capacity to invent explanations. By Wheeler, a theory is an integrated set of relationship with a certain level of validity. Now, what is sociological theory? In the words of Merton, the term sociological theory refers to logically interrelated sets of propositions from which empirical uniformities can be derived. By Thomas Wood, a sociological theory is a logical deductive inductive system of concepts, definitions and propositions which states a relationship between two or more selected aspects of phenomena from which testable hypothesis can be derived. By Homans, a sociological theory consists first of a set of concepts serving to show what the theory is about. Second, it consists of a set of propositions each stating a relationship between at least two of the properties and the propositions from a detective system. Third, some of the propositions of the scientific theory must be contingent in the sense that experience is relevant to their truth or falsity or to that of proposition derived from them. Now we will discuss the characteristics of sociological theory. A theory is couched in terms of well-defined concepts and logically interconnected propositions. Second, a theory is a systematized symbolic construction and does not share the inductability of a fact. Theory building is a creative achievement and involves a qualitative jump beyond the evidence. Third, a theory is provisional in character. It is always open to revision depending on new sites and evidences. It is neither necessary nor desirable for a sociological theory to be a final formulation. Fourth, it is variable in preliminary way that is consistent with a body of known facts and available evidences. Now we will know what is theorizing. Theorizing may be viewed as the process by which individuals account for their physical and social environments. Such a process occurs 
within the context of a specific social setting and defines the physical and social setting of this setting. To theorize roughly means what you do to produce a theory while theorizing is primarily a process, theory is the end product. The two obviously belong together and they complement each other. There exists many ways of theorizing such as induction, deduction, generalizing, model building, using analogies and so on. Theorizing is often seen as an activity that is different from observation. The word theorize comes from Greece and means to see, to observe and to contemplate. It is a mixture in other words of several activities observing something, penetrating something and finding something out. A philosopher has suggested that theorizing according to the Greek means that you concentrate on a phenomena and stay with it trying in this way to understand it. Robert Mertens has indicated five ways in which theory influences research. So, we will talk about the role of theory in social research. Number one, it provides general orientation. Theory suggests potential problems and fruitful hypothesis. It points to the variables that are relevant and important and indicates the dimensions of key variables. Theory helps in the selection of cases, facts and data. Second, developing sociological concepts. Concepts are essential ingredients of theory. Theories specify the form and content of the variables. Researchers translate labels into appropriate indices. For example, Durkheim defined different types of social integration conceptually, but it is left to the empiricists to construct different indices to measure it. Third, it furnishes the post factum sociological interpretations. The, fur, the data are first collected and then subjected to interpretive analysis. This process seeks to explain discovery rather than test a pre-designed hypothesis. Number four, formulates empirical generalizations. A major function of social theory in empirical research is to summarize observed uniformities of relationship between variables and to synthesize them with reference to existing conceptual schemes. The research process itself will prove fruitful not only if it interprets the empirical data by incorporating them into more general principles and theories of the conceptual scheme. Number fifth, further development of sociological theory. Theory produces research and empirical findings in turn elaborate theory. A seemingly isolated informity, uniformity points up to a meaningful relationship between apparently discrete variables. This leads to the modification of original conceptual framework to make allowance for new relations and patterns. Now we will discuss the types of theories. It is given by Homans. He identifies two types of theories, the normative and the non-normative. To speak very roughly, normative theories explain how men ought to behave if they are to accomplish certain results and non-normative theories explain how they actually do behave. The normative theories fall into two categories, the one sided and the two or many sided, while the former seeks to explain how a particular social actor or social group ought to behave in order to attain certain goals. The latter is concerned with interaction between two or more persons who behave normatively towards each other. Theories of applied sociology falls into the first category and the theory of games illustrates the second type 
according to Homans. There are three types of non normative theories that is structural, functional and psychological. Structural theories explain the existence of some element of social behavior. However, element may be defined by its relation to other elements and the relations of these elements to one another in some configuration, a social structure or social system. Types of theories, Helmut Wagner classifies sociological theory into three main categories, positive sociological theories whose author consider or actually treat sociology as a natural science, new positivism, human ecology, structural functionalism, social behaviorism and bio psychological theory of culture fall in this category. Number two, interpretative sociological theories whose authors consider or actually treat sociology as social science in contradistinction of the natural sciences. Theories of cultural understanding, interpretative sociology of action and interaction, interpretative social psychology and social phenomenology represent, represent this class of sociological theories. Non-scientific or evaluative social theories whose authors neither value nor consider nor actually treat sociology as a positive or interpretative science. The examples are social philosophical theory, ideological social theory and humanitarian reform theory. Now we will know about the speculative versus grounded theories. Speculative theory refers to an abstract impressionist approach rooted in the philosophical system. A speculative theory corresponds to a conceptual ordering whereas grounded theory corresponds to an empirical generalization. Specula uh, speculative theories usually give rise to theoretical laws and grounded theories to empirical laws. A grand theory is a broad conceptual scheme with system of interrelated propositions that provide a general frame of reference for the study of social processes and such institutions. Grand theories abound in jargon, tendency statements and intuitive generalizations. Parsons general system theory and Sorokin's theory of social cultural dynamics are examples of the grand theories. Miniature theories are partial theories rather than inclusive theories. They are what Merton calls theories of the middle range. They are more specific and their frame of reference is considerably limited. They generate a manageable number of propositions concerning specific units within society. Macro theories deal with the society as a whole. Micro theories deal with the subsystems that make up the whole. Parsons general systems theory is of the molar type and whereas the Homans exchange theory is of the molecular type. Macro theories are species of grand theories and can be verified only in a preliminary fashion. Micro theories belong to the tribe of the miniature theories and can be tested in scientific way. This is why many scientists claim that micro theories are intrinsically more satisfactory and fruitful in the pursuit of scientific inquiry. Now we will know the major types of theories. Number one is the informal and the formal. Theory may be of the formal scientific type described above structured by assumptions underlying the scientific method or it may everyday life. Mathematical theory and theory in the physical science tend to confirm the former type while single hypothesis, ideology or research hunches they fall into the later category. Descriptive and explanatory second type. Similarly, theories may be predominantly descriptive lacking an underlying explanatory paradigm or they may focus on the explanatory function and be structured accordingly. While 
descriptive theory may be implicitly explanatory, it fails to represent an explanation when its basic paradigm is either absent or invisible. Third is ideological and scientific. The context of a theory may be predominantly ideological or guided by the scientific method with its emphasis on the formulation of assumptions which are empirically tested. While this distinction is a matter of degree rather than form, the scientific method contains the ideological elements also. It is important to define a theorist major aims in order to appreciate the values behind the work. Thus, no theory is completely objective, no matter how objectively it appears to be, it always poses some certain ideological implications. Now comes the intuitive objective. Theories also differ in the extent to which they argue that knowledge is intuitive or subjective as opposed to external and objective. Thus, phenomenologists and mystics would argue the former, while scientists hold more to the latter. In sociology, the distinction is exemplified by the ethnomethodologist on the one hand and structural functionalists on the other. The next one is the inductive and the deductive. Theories may be one of the major types. They may attempt to move from the specific to the general or the vice versa. The former are inductive and the later detective in structure. In sociology, we shall see that most theories are detective using the general example the social system as the independent variable in their explanation system. Psychological and socio psychological theories on the other hand tend to be inductive in the form. Microscopic and macroscopic theories also differ. In their level of analysis, they may focus on the specific and individual level or the general and the societal. In sociology, they tend to be the predominant of the later kind, while psychological explanations focus more on the other level. Each level has its own advantages and problems. However, the microscopic tends to be too general to explain individual phenomena adequately while the microscopic suffers from the opposite problem. Structural functionalism. Theories also differ in focus. Some concentrate on explaining the structure of phenomena while others are more concerned with manner in which these phenomena are evolving and changing. In sociology, for example, Structure from functionalism theory is concerned with the structure of a particular society in terms of the underlying functions, while conflict theory focuses more on the dynamic of a society. The last one is the naturalistic and the social. Finally, theories vary in the kinds of phenomena they use as an explanation factors. Some use biological and naturalistic variables while others concentrate on the social phenomena. Thus, a social scientist may attempt to explain social behavior in terms of humanity's biological instincts or in terms of characteristics of the social system such as its division, level of industrialization and degree of institutionalization, a systemic orientation. Thank you very much.